ब्रह्मांड पुराण पार्ट फाइव ललिता महात्म्य चैप्टर थर्टी सेवेन डेस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अदर इनर अपार्टमेंट्स इन द रॉयल चैम्बर द फुट नोट से इज दिस चैप्टर डिस्क्राइब्स द रिमेनिंग अंतरज ऑफ अदर डीटीज एंड कंक्लूड्स विद द पोएटिक डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ ललिता एंड हर consort the following are the antaras in the upward direction the last one in the last chapter is taken as the base bed or couch of shri lalita 36 tatwas as stairs bindu peetha verse number 45 to 67 assumes forms of 50 peethas antara of anga devis denoting parts of lalita's body verse 40 to 44 the abode of shodashi nitya lalita vindu chakra vindu chakra the nitya devis dwell with 15 ishwaras antara of 15 nitya deities lalita is the 16th verse 31b to 39 antara of four nathas influence of nath kal influence of nath kalt and gurudam verse 25 to 30 antara of samayeshis antara of kameshi vajreshi bhagamala shri devi lalita the fourth devi verse 19 to 24 antara of weapons in person of kameshwari verse 10b to 18 number of the chakra sarva rogahara chakrini presiding deity siddha protectress kechari verse 19 sarvaishwarya verse 6 kaulini sa and the rest pradharana verse 5 ta varga jaini pa varga verse 5 verse 4 kameshwari goddess of speech accompanied by ka varga medini verse 4 cha varga vimala verse 5 varga antara of vashini and other goddesses like kameshwari etc verse 1 to 10a the antara of sarvagna as in chapter 36 hayagriva said 20 hastas above the level of the antara of sarvagna and others in the antara of vashini and others it extends to four nalvas the staircase and apartments should be known as before that chakra that chakra is well known by the name of sarva rogahara destroyer of all diseases vashini and other goddesses are stationed there in due order from the east etc the first one is the goddess vashini the goddess of speech named kameshwari comes thereafter she is accompanied by ka varga guturals modini the goddess of speech accompanied by cha varga patalas cha var cha varga pal- palatals is the third one then comes the goddess of speech named vimala who is embellished by the ta varga cerebrals the fifth one is the goddess of speech called pradharana accompanied by ta varga dentals the sixth one is jaini invigorated by pa varga labials in the square of letters beginning with y is the goddess of speech called 
Sarvaishwarya, etc. Kaulini, accompanied by the six letters beginning with Sa, is considered as the eighth one. All these goddesses are embellished with pearl ornaments. They are engaged in performing japas. They are considered to be fondled by the spontaneous flow of prose and poetry. They stay there, O pot born sage, delighting and amusing Sri Devi by means of sweet lyrics and dramas pleasing to the ears. O scorcher of Vatapi, these deities have been famous by their secret names. The presiding deity of this chakra is glorified by the name Siddha. Khechari is considered as the protectress of this chakra. O subduer of the Vindhya mountain, twenty hastas above the level of the Antara of Vashini is the chakra called Astra. Its extent is four nalvas. The five arrows of Kameshwara are the five goddesses of Bana arrow. The two gods of the primordial man and woman are very brilliant. Then there are two bows, O enemy of the Vindhya mountain. These nine weapons are conceived in the nine lotuses, including the pair of nooses of brilliant luster. There are four weapons, O pot born sage, four belonging to Kameshwari and four to Sri Mahesha, that is arrow, bow, god and news. Put together, there are eight blazing and shining weapons. These divine weapons are extremely gratified by the blood of the wicked Dhanavas that was drunk by them in the course of the great battle with the Asura Bhanda. Those divine weapons are active and alert now. Among other weapons, there are supplementary weapons of these weapons. Their number runs into crores. Vajra Shakti Thunderbolt Adamantine Lance Satagni A rocket like missile capable of killing hundreds Bhushandi a missile perhaps a fire arm Mushala a mess Krapana a sword Patisha a sharp edged spear Mudgara an iron club Bhindipala a sling for throwing stone thousands and thousands of weapons like these serve with intoxicated excitement the great shaktis of the eight weapons. The footnote says uh, Satagni this one or a cylindrical piece of wood studded with iron pikes. Twenty hastas above the level of the antara of weapons O scorcher of Batapi is the above of the three Samayeshis. It is considered to extend to four nalvas. There, the three deities beginning with Kameshi and a fourth one also reside. She alone is the goddess Lalita, the mother of the entire universe. Listen to the names of the three goddesses. Kameshi is the first. The other two are Vajreshi and Bhagamala. Thousands of Shaktis serve them. All those different kinds of deities remembered as pertaining to all the systems of philosophy serve the great goddesses there beginning with Kameshi. Sri Devi is the deity that completes the number when these deities as well as the deities named Nityas, Chakrinis and the Yoginis are reckoned. Mother Lalita who reclines on the lap of Lord Kameshwara is the fourth one 
in the group of Kameshi and others. She is the sixteenth among Nityas. She is glorified as the ninth one among Yoginis and Chakra Devis. O slayer of Ilvala, twenty hastas above the level of the Antarala of the Samayeshis is the abode called Nathantara. It extends to four nalvas. It is embellished with staircase as before. The great devis, goddesses, there are Nathas who have founded and popularized the Yoga Shastra. They are the instructors in mantras for everyone. They are verily the great oceans of all lores. They are four Yoga Nathas for the protection of the worlds. They had been created by Lord Kamesha. Listen to their names. Mitro, two Mitras, Shodisha and Charya. For the sake of protection, O pot-born sage, many persons of the nature of Padukas, sandals, have been created by them. Those are persons with divine knowledge of the lores. Groups of human beings, groups of Siddhas, Suratapasas, celestial, ascetics, etc. They have attained Siddhis of Shalokya, having the same world as that of the Godhead. Sarupya, having the same form, and Sayujya, having complete identity. They are great teachers. Many serve the Gurus, preceptors. Twenty hastas above the antara of Nathas is the excellent abode called Nityantara. It extends to four nalvas. There are fifteen Nityas, eternal goddesses. They are Nitya Kameshwari, Nitya Bhagamalini, Nitya Klinna, Bherunda, Vannivasini, Mahavajreshwari, Duti, Tvarita, Kulasundari, Nitya, Nilapataka, Vijaya, Sarva Mangala, Jwala Malini, and Chitra. All these Nitya deities have the form of goddess. They are extremely powerful and valorous. They have assumed the status of the lunar days beginning with Prathama, the first of those days. They pervade the three worlds. They have the forms of the three units of time, past, present and future. They are adepts in Kalagrasa, consuming even Kala, that is, time or god of death. At the bidding of Devi, goddess Lalita, they stay assuming the forms of hundred years of longevity of everyone beginning with Brahma who lives for a very long time. They are always active and devoid of agony. They are born of the excellent body of Sri. For the prosperity of all the worlds, they serve Lalita who is in the form of Chit. Fifteen brilliant Ishvara have undergone the status of being their abodes. It is considered that the abode of Shodashi, that is Lalita, considered as the sixteenth one in the group of Nityas, is the Bindu Chakra of special creation. The footnote says. Um, Instead of Mitro, Shodisha and Charya, it can be Mitresha, Uddisha, Shastisha and Charya. Then, O Podborn Sage, twenty hastas above the Antara of the Nitya deities is the Antara of the Anga Devis, deities of various limbs. It is said that it extends up to four Nalvas. The staircase and apartment are as before. O sage 
and the the shaktis beginning with hridaya devi deity of the heart are in it they are mentioned to be six in number with rid devi shiro devi deity of the head shikha devi deity of the tuft varma devi deity of the armor drishti devi deity of the vision and shastra devi deity of the weapons they are very close to lalita the consort of shri kameshwara all their limbs are full with the freshness of youthful bloom and beauty they are very attentive they hold weapons haftily they move about both within the bindu peetha and all round too they carry out the order of lalita they are the close companions and confidants of the vashis then ten hastas above the antara of the deities of the limbs is the great peetha pedestal sit named vindunada it extends to eight nalvas it resembles the rising sun this should be known as bindu peetha maha peetha shri peetha vidya peetha and ananda peetha it assumes the forms of 50 peethas there the excellent couch of shri lalita devi is placed it is pervaded by five brahmans that is brahma vishnu maheshana ishvara and the supreme brahman it is very great and is the cause of the three worlds it is mentioned that the four padas legs of that couch are 10 hastas high and three hastas in girth they are in the forms of brahma vishnu maheshana and ishvara they have attained the status of shaktis too on account of perpetual meditation on shri one of the legs of the couch resembles the japa kusuma the china rose it should be known that it is of the nature of brahma it is in the south east the footnote says here there is an omission of the description of two more legs in the southeast and north west and of the forms of vishnu and maheshwara the omitted lines as ascertained from n are as follows the second leg of the couch has the splendor of a big sapphire it should be known as of the nature of vishnu and it is in the southwest direction the third leg of the couch is as spotless as pure crystal it should be understood to be representative of literature of the nature of rudra and it is in the northwest direction the fourth leg of the couch has the splendor of karnikara the pericarp of a lotus it should be known that it is of the nature of ishvara as it is in the north east all these have weapons with them they are adorned with all ornaments above and below they have the forms of pillars they have personal forms in the middle they keep their eyes closed in meditation on shri their limbs are steady without any movement due to meditation on shri above them the plank of the couch is sadashiva it has the splendor of a full blown pomegranate flower the plank is six nalvas long and four nalvas broad it is continuously sparkling and refulgent beginning from the antara of the anga devis and ending with the plank of the couch o sage staircases in the form of the tatvas shine they are made of chintamani stones they are 36 in number the footnote says both shaivas and shaktas believe in 36 tatvas but of these the first 12 are imaginary 
as SN Dashgupta puts in puts it while the remaining 24 are the same as in Samkhya's the list of tattvas is given in 58 to 60 for tabular systematic presentation by Sir John Woodruff's Sir John Woodruff's the garland of letters second edition page number 20 uh, 252 to 253 we shall mention the stairs in the ascending order they are earth water fire wind ether smell taste color touch sound sexual organ anus feet hands organ of speech nose tongue skin eyes ears ego intellect mind prakriti purusha niyati fate or destiny Kala, time. Kala, time. Raga, attachment. Kala, arts. Vidya, lore. Maya, the pure Vidya, Ishvara, Shakti, Sadash, Shiva Shakti, and Shiva. Thus, the rose of stairs. numbering 36 have been recounted the entire row of stairs is on the eastern side of the couch then over the couch is the bed made of the down and feathers of swan its height is only one hasta it extends to four nalvas there are brilliant pillows both for the feet as well as for the head. It is further rendered splendid by 64 golden vase, golden vases and water jars with pink color. The sheet spread over it was made of saffron colored fabric pure and soft with the luster of ruby. It is on this that the primordial Lord Shiva, Kameshwara, stays permanently. He sits facing the east. He is endowed with sympathy and mercy. He is very handsome in his romantically loveable dress and guise. He is perpetually 16 years old. He has the luster of the disk of the rising sun. He has three eyes and four hands. He is adorned with necklaces, bracelets, coronets, bangles and other ornaments. And an exquisite smile spreads entirely over his cheeks like the moonlight. Thus the Lord sits there alert and watchful. Description of Goddess Lalita the footnote says the description of goddess Lalita is certainly romantic, but the words Bindu Pita, the screen of Mahamaya, for example, verse 93, scarcely veil its spiritual content despite poetic fancy. Goddess Lalita is seated on his lap. She is reddish saffron in color, like the midday sun. She is always 16 years old. She is proud of her fresh youthfulness. She has the luster of unpolished ruby stone. The splendor of her nails is like that of sandal paste and lotus. She has redness in the soles of her feet regardless of application of red lac. Anklets and other ornaments on her feet produce a charming tinkling sound. The sound of her bangles is very charming. Her shanks, leg from ankle to knee, subdued the pride of excellent quiver of arrows of the god of love. Her thighs, her thighs shine like the trunk and the forearms of an elephant or like the stem of the plantain tree in complexion. Her hips and loins are beautified by a red silk cloth 
very thin and smooth to touch. She is refulgent with well-developed hips and buttocks. The knot of her garment comes up to the middle of her thighs. She shines with a girdle set with gems and jewels. Her navel is depressed like a great whirlpool and the three wrinkled folds spreading over it appears like a river of light and gleam. She has worn a number of pearl necklaces swinging to and fro over her breasts. Her slender waist appears to be breaking due to the weight of her plump breasts. Her hands are as soft as the glossy petals of Shirisha flower. Asasia Shirisha. All her four hands were embellished with a number of armlets, bracelets and bangles. The fingers have rings round them. Her beautiful neck, which is close by her husband, is very beautiful. Her face is circular and lustrous like a mirror with beautiful chin with gentle curves. Her lips are red in color. The row of her sparkling teeth is neatly set. They shine like the 32 lores. They have the refulgence of buds of kunda flowers, jasmine. She appears to be radiating or displaying moonlight through her teeth. She shines with many ornaments set with pearls. Her eyes are as large and long as the inner petal of the Ketaka flower. In her forehead, as charming as the crescent moon, the forelocks have been neatly arranged. Her ears are adorned with different kinds of ornaments and earrings of ruby. The betel leaf preparation that she chews is always rendered fragrant by camphor and mask. Her face is as sweet and charming as the moon in the autumn. Her beautiful coronet is well set with the fine pieces of Chintamani stone. She shines with her third eye in the forehead sparkling like a gem set tilaka mark. Her tresses are dark and thick set like the dense darkness. She shines with the mark of saffron applied in the middle of her head like a line. The crescent moon shines like a diadem. Her eyes move to and fro due to inebriation. She possesses all romantic dress and makeup, exciting love. She is embellished with all ornaments. She is the mother of the entire world. She increases bliss perpetually. She is the source of origin of Brahma, Vishnu, Girisha, Isha and Sadashiva. She delights everyone with the stream of sympathy exuding from benign side glance. Thus that holy goddess Lalitambika, the destroyer of sin, appears replendent. People know that the benefit of worship of other deities is the opportunity to worship her. Hence the benefit of her worship is the opportunity to worship her. How can I then describe Goddess Lalita adequately? Even in the course of a thousand crores of years, a fraction of it cannot be described. She who is to be described is in the form which is beyond the ken of speech. How can my or my words have access to her? She is that ultimate reality from where words recede without reaching her along with the mind. Of what avail is profuse utterance? Listen to this fact. This is not being spoken by me out of partiality, love or delusion. 
O ascetic, let the branches of the Kalpa tree be pens. Let the seven oceans be ink pots. Let the earth, which extends to fifty crores of yojanas, become the paper. Let the time for writing be more than a parardha. One followed by seventeen zeros of years. Let the people in the world write, each of them having a crore of hands. O pot born sage, even if all the speakers be as eloquent as Brihaspati, it is impossible to adequately describe a thousandth part of the luster of a toenail of the lotus like foot of Sri Devi. Or it is enough to say that all activities will be in vain in the matter of eulogizing her. All round the Bindupita, a handsome and symmetrical curtain hangs down. It is the Mahamaya Javanika. screen of Mahamaya and is dark in color. The numerous ornaments and embellishments obtaining there are the rarest ones. Desirous of describing them, my power of speech is struck down, stifled at the throat itself due to shame. Above the goddess, about forty hastas from the ground level a chandelier and canopy are kept suspended. They are rare in all the three worlds. She alone knows everything regarding the good features obtaining there. Her exalted grandeur and felicity is far beyond even our comprehension. By whom can it be described? Thus for the sake of slaving Thus, for the sake of slaying Bhanda, the great Daitya, Lalitambika, has manifested herself from the Chidanala, the fire of knowledge and consciousness. She has entirely burned all Dhanavas, presiding over Sri Nagara, which had been built by celestial artisans and craftsmen and which has 16 holy establishments she protects the universe continuously there are there are other Sri Puras also in this manner in the arrangement there is no difference among them the difference is only in the name those who recount the story of Sri Pura beginning with the garden of many trees attain the greatest goal the men too who listen to it who ask about it who search for it and who hold the book thereof attain the greatest goal those devotees who get a replica of Sri Pura made through craftsmen with the different parts of the same duly represented and built a huge temple of Sri Devi do attain the greatest goal.